Jordan and the Bulls change the culture. Dennis gave us that edge on the front line. We were winning. Congratulations. Kiss the trophy. Jerry Krause said, we're dismantling this team. I never saw it ending like that. This about to be a... I let my anger motivate the players. What's up? <laughs> we look for number six. They all understood who I was. My mentality was to go out and win at any cost. How should lack of activism affect MJ's overall legacy? Um, in this particular instance, I don't think it should affect it at all. I mean, first of all, we don't know what he was doing behind the scenes. As a matter of fact, on countless occasions, we've heard how charitable and philanthropic he has been. Uh, particularly with his dollars. He wasn't one that wanted to go out front and center and speak on a plethora of issues, and he's remained true to that to this day, not just politically, but beyond. Think about the last dance that we've been talking about for the last couple of weeks. Jordan's done one interview, one, and that was Good Morning, that was with Good Morning America. That's it, and he was probably contracted to do that in order to promote the Last Dance docuseries. That's Michael Jordan, he talks rarely, if ever, he doesn't like to do that. He's never been comfortable doing so. And the bubble that he was in, as we saw uh, during episodes five and six yesterday, it got to him uh, so significantly so that that contributed in large part to his willingness to walk away from the game for a couple of years or nearly a couple of years. Now to get into the Harvey Gantt situation, as a black man, let me be very, very clear. Uh, we didn't like that. Um, I'm not speaking for all African Americans, uh, but a vast majority of folks from the African American community didn't like um, his lack of a political stance at all. Uh, to a lot of African Americans throughout this nation, Jesse Helms represented something uh, very different to us. Uh, we found him to be a reprehensible individual in terms of the policies that he promoted um, and he wanted to insert and implement into our government. We didn't like him a little bit. And as a result, when you look at the Democratic nominee, uh, nominee for the Senate, that was Harvey Gantt, considering that Michael Jordan was raised in North Carolina, that he started the University of North Carolina, there were a lot of people that wanted him and desperately wanted and expected him to say something. And his reluctance to do so certainly was a turn off. We were turned off until we saw him play. And then when we saw him play, we got the hell over it. Not to mention the fact it wasn't like he endorsed Jesse Helms. He just didn't want to get involved. He didn't want to speak and come out and endorse somebody. I think the thing that hurt Michael Jordan most when it came to Harvey Gantt was his willingness later on to endorse Bill Bradley, if I remember correctly, because people were saying, wait a minute, it's one thing not to get involved at all, but it's another thing entirely to choose not to get involved with Harvey Gantt, but to get involved with Bill Bradley. It turned a lot of folks off, but Michael Jordan, his, his mystique and everything that came with it, uh, obviously carried a lot of cachet. We have to remember that it was 1990 before he was a champion. He was 27 years of age. His average salary for the first 11 years of his career was only $4 million. Even though he collected a lot more off the court, they were endorsements. And even though there was no Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, or anything else, at that particular moment in time, it was still a time, Greeny, and you can piggyback off of this if you want to along with you, Max. There was a time, e even though that wasn't the time of social media, during that time, if you said one word wrong, if you said one sentence wrong, particularly if you were Michael Jordan, it would resonate so profoundly that it would compromise everything that you were trying to build. Considering the doors, his cachet, his excellence opened up for so many people to follow. Also piggybacking off of the Isaiah Thomases of the world and others, even though those wasn't political issues, they were just basketball, how a word or a sentence literally ravaged their careers in the minds of the public, you had a lot of people like Michael Jordan that just said, you know what, this ain't worth it. This is not my lane. I'm not into politics. I'm into this. And that's just the way it went. When Michael Jordan, when you saw last night in the episode uh, on The Last Dance where Michael Jordan says, hey, I said Republicans buy sneakers to ingest on a bus to my teammates, so there's nothing to apologize for, Okay, that's a, you can take that as a joke. In other words, hey, I don't want to get involved because um, they're, I have business interests. But, and he was saying that kind of out of the side of his mouth, kind of you know, tongue in cheek. 
um, making fun of this, maybe a little truth under it because people have business, but that's not really the reason. Let's assume on the surface that that's true. Let's take him at his word, Jordan at his word, that that's not really the reason that he didn't endorse um, Harvey Gantt, who was Jesse Helms' opponent. Let's say the real reason is, is what because what, what I took from what he, the conversation he had with his mother, as it was reported um, on the docu-series, is that he doesn't want to vouch for someone who he doesn't really know. He doesn't want to vouch for something he doesn't really know about, because there's a difference between supporting an idea or, or being against an idea and support and giving your endorsement to a person who you don't know about. Okay, let's take him at his word there. This is not a situation, Republicans buy sneakers too, where Jesse Helms is like a Republican, like Mitt Romney or someone like that. If you are a black man in the South, um, Jesse Helms, it, it, you know, the, the opponent to Jesse Helms, in order to endorse that guy, would have to be such an awful figure that, that it would become news, you know, like you wouldn't have to really be following politics to understand how bad his opponent was, especially if his opponent is African American. So symbolically, that looked very bad for Jordan, as we all say nowadays, the optics are bad for Michael Jordan there. And it really is bad for Jordan's legacy. Not in the sense that um, as time goes on, it will be diminished in some way. But when you're comparing the legacies of the biggest, most famous, greatest athletes who ever lived, it's not an issue so much of we're gonna take credit away from Michael Jordan for not endorsing Jesse Helms' opponent because whether people like it or not, when an election comes down to two people and you're in a position of power and you don't endorse one, you say, I'm just going to stay out of it, I don't know if about it. it, de facto, like every vote that doesn't go to that guy goes to the other guy or gal, right? So in a sense, well, I don't, when people sit out elections or when people want to do a protest vote, okay, but really you're voting for the other person in essence. You're, you're not working against them getting elected. And again, Jordan should have been, I don't think that's a, that's a stretch or unreasonable, they should have been actively, specifically when he's asked, hey, could you work against the re-election of Jesse Helms? Yes, that's something he should have done. So, so what I'm saying, Stephen A., Mike, is it doesn't add to Jordan's legacy. In an